The Vice President, Yemi Oshimbajo, S-A-N, has said that as a matter of urgency, the Nigerian judiciary must address the issue of delays in processing cases through the courts. This is as he referred to the delays in the Nigerian judicial process as the elephant in the room, wondering what would happen to the country's legal profession in another 50 years, given the gridlock in processing cases through the courts and the question of the integrity of the legal process. Now joining us to discuss this is legal practitioner Tunji Abdulhamid. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Abdulhamid, for joining us. Thank you for having me on. Uh, every single time conversations like this come up, I look um, closely at the NJC, I look closely at those on the bench, and of course the NBA, uh, in the role that they play in um, making sure that the judicial process, um, the wheels of it in itself is oiled so that it can move faster. But I want to go first to the issue that the vice president raised, talking about judicial reforms. Um, I still know that the federal government is still fighting with states on the issue of judicial autonomy um, for uh, local governments and even states. Let's start with that. Why is that still a problem in 2021? Yeah, because we are, we are in a country where people in authority disregard the law. The, the people in authority doesn't uh, bother about what the law says. They only bother about what they want to do and what they think they should do. Because uh, the issue of uh, autonomy has been in the condition since 2010 or so. And I don't know why it's not being implemented to date. In fact, to the extent that the president even made an uh, executive order, a superfluous order, uh, 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 trying to enforce the, the provision of the constitution, yet we have not, we have not had anything about it. So uh, I think uh, it's, it's, it's a confirmation of the kind of country we are. We are in a country where we don't care about law, and as well as those in authority. They, they ignore the law when it does not suit them. And they follow the law when it's written. That's 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 why we are having the problem in, the, in this regard. It is clear in the constitution, section one two one, uh, says that the the, the the judiciary must be must have autonomy. But to date, we are still begging them to have it, and not because uh, there won't be any consequences, and they will continue to do that. Hmm. I'm going to come back to the consequences part, but 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 let's look at the reforms. You are obviously a lawyer. You work in the system. You have frustrations, and and when we talk about reforms, what are those? What are the basic or the front burner reforms that we we as a country need to make uh, to um, better the processes uh, in our judicial system? I think the, 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 the reform, are, the major ones are this. One, we need to look at the mode of appointment of judges. That is one of them. We have talked about, we just talked about one now, the autonomy. It's also part of it because uh, lack of autonomy is hindering the, the capacity of the judiciary to, in a, to the extent. Because when the judiciary believe that, look, for them to get the needed uh, finance, they must go come in to the executive. They will do the bidding of the executive, and therefore, there won't be justice. They will only do what the executive wants want them to do. So autonomy is one of the major uh, reforms that we need to do. We need to ensure that this issue of reform is complied with, and people, uh, the, the state, give the judiciary the required uh, autonomy. The appointment, as, like I said again, is another aspect of it. Today, appointment of judges are based on the... Uh, uh, not, not, not based on merit, uh, uh, no longer. It's based on the relationship. Uh, it's based on the what, influence. What sort of relationships are you talking about? If you look at some of the, if, if you look at our judiciary today, if you hear, if you see the name of the people being appointed, you will realize that they are related to either a sitting judge, a retired judge, a, 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 a person in position of authority in the country, and that is that is that are the kind of people you see in the position of authority in, in, uh, as judges. This is. And most of them don't, don't merit it because they don't know what the law is. They don't know, they don't know, we do respect. But how, do, do, how, how come they are still sitting there? How come that they're appointed and they're still sitting there? Nobody's contesting Because it. we're in Nigeria. The same. The, goes. But, but why, do, why do the lawyers complain if they have not contested it? If you say, if you, if, if, now, if, so I'm sorry, in one breath, we're, we're accusing, many have accused Mr. President of, of not bringing meritocracy into his appointment. But then we see the same thing happening in our judicial system. And, and the judges or the lawyers, everybody on the bench takes it sitting down. So I'm wondering, what are you saying? If you're complaining about yeah, you, it and know, doing you, nothing you know about it, the then problem. what's the essence? The appointment is done by the, by the governor. Uh, that it is in the, in, in the case of the states. But can't it be the contested? Is, hello? Can it not be contested by... by no, that, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. That it, those are the kind of reform that we need now. We need a situation whereby appointment of judges will be taken out of the governor, in the hands of the governor and the president. The president appoints 
or approve those who are who, who will be appointed as a court of appeal and the Supreme Court judges. So uh, uh, subject to the uh, uh, commission by the NJC. So if you take away that from the executive and give it to the, directly to the, maybe a body or, or whatever NJC or somebody to say to solely be responsible for the appointment of judges, then there, there won't be any need for those in the judiciary to be subservient to the executive. Because you know we have three arms of government in this country. But, but most times we see judiciary as a, as a, as a baby of the of the of the heart. They are as far as I'm concerned. I don't believe Mr. President should be number one. We have we have three number one citizens in this country. The executive, the head of executive is number one. The head of, of the state should be number one. The head of the of the, of the judiciary should be number one. In fact, to the extent that judiciary today is below, is be, behind the the senior president, is behind the deputy uh, senior president. Probably, I'm not too sure whether he's also not behind the uh, deputy uh, speaker or uh, speaker of the of, of the House of Representatives. So, a mm -hmm. uh, head of an uh, uh, organ of the government. Is now made number five or number or number number four in the country. You can see the injustice in that regard. So what I'm saying is that look, we need to take away appointment of judges from the governors. The governor should not be responsible for appointing the judges because you will pay the you will pay, uh, pay the pipers. They take the tone. So you know, the tone. So in other words, when you know that you your appointment will not you don't have anything to do with the, with the executive, you will be bold. You be you have the you have the you have the you will be bold to att attack or not or do the right thing without any any any, any, any fear. Of favor from those uh, government because the situation where we are in this country today, where governors will now donate cars to the to the to the executive uh, to the judiciary, and they will do as if they are they are, they are, they are dashing them the car or they are, they are just doing them a favor. That is not a favor. It should be it's not be it's not be the responsibility of the of the governor buying cars for the judiciary. When you buy cars to the judiciary, then you are indirectly buying them. You know, whenever you need them, they will they will have to budge, and that's what we are having here. So appointment is one of the the the, the issue we need to look into. And then, majorly again, we need to improve our infrastructure. The courts are not are not what it is. The, the system, the, the situation in the court is bad. If you enter some court courtroom, courtroom, you will think you are in a, in a market, and then it will it will look like a, most times when there's no light, there's no work. But more, there are judges still right uh, in longer at this at this at this age. So we need to improve on technology as well to ensure that look things move faster in this country. We need to appoint people with integrity. People who can who can stand on their own to 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 to, head, uh, to be in the judiciary, and we most importantly we need to look for people who knows the law, who have in other words merits should be major consideration for appointing a judge, not your relationship with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the people in authority. Because like, like I said again, I repeat it again. Look at the name of judges you see in the country, uh, the, uh, the new one being appointed. Not I'm not talking about the higher courts. I'm talking about the high court, for instance. Mm -hmm. You see more they, mostly. They are related to those in authority or those in the judiciary. In other words, either they are the Court of Appeal, Supreme Court, High Court, or former former judges or former uh, governors, former present governors. Those are the, those are the people, kind of people you see in, 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 in bench. And by the time they get to the to, to the place, the, the, the work becomes a heavier for them, and they won't be able to do anything. Um, I want to refer to something that happens in the U.S. I know we don't use the same constitution, and the modus operandi for Nigeria and the U.S. is different. But we see that the people who run for district attorneys, they run for it like it's an office. So they're elected um, to, into those offices as district attorneys. But because we do not necessarily have district attorneys and, and our, our system of government is different, I'm thinking, why can't these people who are running for judges or who want to be in those seats um, do the same thing. Uh, can we not adjust the constitution to favor that uh, processing? Uh, and again, the reason why I asked that question earlier, if uh, why the um, members of the judiciary are a bit silent on this issue is, I remember some time ago when the president, Mr. President, was at the NBA, I think it was a year ago or, or so, um, at the NBA conference, and, and he did say something about the fact that um, the rule of law can take you know, um, a seat while national security um, it should be the major issue. And the people who were there applauded the president. So again, the judiciary, all of you, including the NBA, the bench, every single person, can I say that you're all complicit and that's, and, and that's why what is happening is happening. And that's why you're also taking the back bench uh, in the nation's you know, process. Not, not, not all of us who are clapping. Few people who are trying to please the president. Who are trying, you know, in Nigeria, even the president, if he cough, people, some people will clap. In Nigeria, some people are just, are just like that. They just want to satisfy and just see themselves as a, we are, we, we like the president. We are following it for, for sentiment purposes and for purpose of, a, a, I, don't, I don't want to use that adjective. I won't be, it won't be serious if I'm abusing anybody. But like I said, it's not everybody. If we, if we follow that, the trend that they're after, most lawyers criticize that particular 
uh, comments, and it was highly, highly, uh, widely criticized by the judge of the lawyers, that are respected lawyers, not 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 psycho fans like those who are clapping at that time. Most most time, apparently, most people don't, don't are even clapping. Did not even hear what he said. We're just clapping because we, in Nigeria we are just like that. People just want to to be to be in the good book of those in authority, whether it's doing the right thing or wrong thing, and that's one of the, our major problems in this country. Rather than tell them the truth. They just want to be clapping for them to see us to say they are they are they are doing well. They are doing well. So it is it's not about see people are not talking. When people are talking, you can see the 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 center, just like what you did your, your, your last discussion regarding inflation of a uh, justice or delays a uh, uh, house. People are talking about it. People are people have been talking. The it did and that was not the first time. It happened the other time and nothing happened. So it's, 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 the problem we have in this country is that executives see, see themselves as the alpha and omega, and they can do and not do because they control all the security apparatus. They control the money. They control everything. So the other people are on, are subservient to them, and that, that's why they are able to do whatever they are doing in that in that regard. It's not as if the people are not talking. We are talking. The people are not yielding. It's not the talk is not yielding results. We have been complaining. We have been talking about this. We have been even talking about this appointment of uh, uh, judges that look use merit rather than uh, influence. Mm. Then nobody is listening to us, and nothing can be happened. And this, because it's Nigeria. Anything happen? Anything goes. Finally, before I let you go, um, Femi Falana, um, of, of course, was at that event where the vice president was, and he t spoke about the issue of governors appointing judges and that having to be stopped. He also said something, and I'd like to quote him uh, directly. He noted that the customary court had been completely abandoned. He also added that the customary courts are courts that handle majority of the cases for the poor. Again, there's this saying that we have in Nigeria that the, 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 the judiciary is the last hope of the common person. If the hope of the common person is being jettisoned, where does that leave the average Nigerian? I won't, I won't, I won't lie to you. Today in our country, judiciary is not, the last, it's not the last hope of the common man. The judiciary is about those who have influence. It's for, it's for those who have influence, those who have money. Because if you have influence, if you have money, you can. It's about. It's, I, I won't, I'm sorry to say. That I'm, not, I'm sorry to say. It's now a cash and carry. Some people are. Some people are just. Uh, uh, once, that's that's why. That's why we are seeing so many conflicting uh, uh, judgments because uh, it's no longer based in, uh, 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 on, on position of law. It's based on personal interest, sentiments, and all those things. So as far as I'm concerned, the hope of common man, as as far as the judiciary is concerned, I think it's, it's gradually losing its uh, value. And I'm not. I'm not sure today the common man has, has seen anything. They don't even have any hope. In, in, in judiciary, as far as I'm concerned, because they see it as a, there's a lot of issues. There is a delay. There is no there is no proper justice delif delivery. There is you know they say delay delay uh, the, what's it called uh, justice delay is it's justice denied. Justice when denied, you drag hope, uh, justice, then you are denied you are denied people justice. So as far as I'm concerned, it's it's sad that people that people are losing the masses are losing hope on in the judiciary. And it's, it's is, is there hope for the customary courts to be revived again because? This is a very important court uh, system it, for those it's, at the It's only about customary court. It's about everywhere, everything. You know, Nigeria, it's only this, this issue we are talking about. It's not about usually alone. It's a general uh, issue entirely in the, in the country. The system is generally is not, is not, is not working. And that's why, we are, that, that's why usually is not uh, accepted from that, from that situation. If the system is working generally, usually we, also, we will also be forced to work because it's not working. Everything goes wrong. We have customary court that are working some, in some area. It will like what we call Sharia court in uh, some parts of the country. It's, it's, it's customary court. Uh, and uh, today, most people have, people have abandoned it. They see it as a, it's, you know, it's not a court of records. Most of them are not court of records. And they don't, and most of the cases they handle, they have to expand their jurisdiction. If they want them, if they want, if they want people to also participate, uh, participate, uh, 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 see uh, customary courts as part of the uh, good system, they must improve in their jurisdiction and uh, give them more, more power to be able to do more job. That, that, that been done by the High Court and the other courts. Well, Tunji Abdulhamid is a legal practitioner. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, being part of the conversation. Thank you for having me. All right. It's my pleasure. Well, I want to thank you all for being part of the conversation tonight, but I will leave you with a roundup of all of the conversations we've had from Monday to today. I am Mariana Cohn. See you on Monday. What is um, the core responsibility of the army? Um, the army is meant to um, ward off um, external aggression.
unlike what we have in, in Nigeria today. Not only in in, uh, in the South, East, we also have it all around Nigeria, where you have soldiers uh, coming out from the barracks and taking up the responsibility of internal security. For me, it is totally unacceptable. This policy is in the real sense when it comes to removal of sub subsidy, which I don't even think the issue is about subsidy here. It's about an attempt by the presidency, because we have more of the presidency than, than the president. This is an attempt by the presidency and NNPC alongside the international collaborators to ensure that they creep the Nigerian economy okay with this policy. And as we hear, we hear from like in every setting in all political um, countries, there will always be disaffection, there will always be complaints, there will always be people who will seek attention, there will always be people that just want to be pacified, there will be people who just want to rub on the back, a pat on the back, rub on the head. So I think and I'm convinced that APC in Lagos is as strong as ever. So you have the police policing the population, but nobody is policing the police. And that's the problem. So until, there is, until the Police Service Commission, for instance, uh, takes that job seriously of policing the police and holding them accountable for their actions, they're not going to see much changes. How can we have peace without justice? Is that ever possible? Now you are the ask that question. Can you have peace without justice? After all the report where they do, they don't tell us anything. We want to know what happened. Who are the people responsible? Why did it have to happen? They are busy there saying that the report is rubbish. Anybody who won't follow them go mad. No problem. But me, I know that all of this is just simply booboo, playing to the gallery. It's master's voice. And I don't want to be a part of all that shenanigans. The first is the issue of uh, referencing and cross-referencing, whether those things we are done uh, properly, uh, because the issue of cross-referencing is very, very germane uh, to uh, the, 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 the bill. The moment you do improper cross-referencing, it has very serious implications, especially when we have election petitions. The second issue we are looking at is the issue of topographical errors, whether there are topographical errors that can just be uh, 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 corrected. The third issue is whether any of the provisions of the of the bill violates the core intent of the constitution. Because as you are aware, the constitution is the fundamental law of the land. Now, the fourth issue we are looking at is whether there are issues of proper sequencing, especially in relation to the dates. And you know, in relation to the work of the commission, dates are very, very important. Then we're also looking at whether there are also provisions in the bill that are difficult to implement. We need to tell the president if there are provisions uh, that are difficult to implement. Then we have to put the bill side by side with the existing legal framework, with the existing electoral act, and see whether there are provisions that have been deleted that needs to be restored, or whether there are provisions uh, that need to um, uh, be reworked on. So those are the things that the president asks us to, uh, to look at. And the commission has looked at it I will respond to the president uh, within the time frame the president gave to the commission uh, to respond. But I think it really boils down to two things. One, trust and accountability. Um, so these reports are really important because they start to build trust back between the government and between, uh, between the people through these recommendations, through these reforms. Um, I think that it's really, really important to, you have to build that trust back through actions of the state, actions of the federal government. But at the same time, you have to hold people accountable for those that committed crimes, for those that broke the law, for those that uh, did things that were counter to the democratic principles, they have to be held accountable. 
And that also builds trust. When you hold people accountable for, for their actions when they break the law, that will also build trust between the government and between the people. And indeed, our ambassador said this just today, um, as our secretary said when he was here in, in November as well.